Hello all, welcome back to the daily answer writing program at 9 p.m. This is Mohanapriya from Officers IAS Academy. Today here we are assembled for the discussion of the day 41 question. So let us directly get into the discussion. Explain the concepts of carrying capacity. In the context of Himalayas, identify the key factors that affect its carrying capacity and discuss the potential consequences of exceeding its limits. So before we get into the discussion of this particular question, let me give an overview of what exactly this carrying capacity is all about. What is this carrying capacity? So carrying capacity is considered to be the maximum amount of species or population that an environment or ecosystem will be able to support in a sustainable manner without any detrimental impact on its natural resources. To put it in more simpler fashion, let me give you an example. Assume there is a region of land and there are ample amount of forest regions, there is ample amount of water supply, lakes, rivers, groundwater, everything is sufficient there. And assume there are 100 people living in that particular region. All of a sudden, in a matter of one year, assume that the population of that particular region has increased to say 1000. So from 100, the population has exploded to 1000. Now, imagine the consequences that will happen in that particular region. So, so when the population is just going to explode, there's going to be more exploitation of that resources, more groundwater extraction, more depletion of the natural water supplies through lakes and rivers, more forests will be cleared for accommodating more people. So this is going to create a lot of impact and disturb the natural balance, right? So carrying capacity is considered to be that fine balance point where both the species and the natural ecosystem can mutually coexist and support each other. And this carrying capacity assessment of a particular region is very, very important in order to ensure long term sustainability. So this is the concept of carrying capacity. Now, so you'll have to, since this is the first part of the question, so you'll have to explain this concept of carrying capacity in detail. And then it is this specific question has been confined to be in the context of Himalayas. So we'll have to discuss with respect to Himalayas. What are the key factors which are affecting the carrying capacity, which is disturbing the carrying capacity of that particular ecosystem? And then we'll also have to discuss the potential consequences of exceeding. So when the carrying capacity of that particular region is going to exceed its value, what are what will be the consequences in the Himalayan ecosystem will be the last part of the answer. So we can easily divide this question into three parts. So first part will be the explanation of the carrying capacity. Second part, we'll be discussing about the factors which are affecting the carrying capacity of the Himalayan ecosystem. And then the third part, we'll be discussing about the possible consequences in the Himalayan ecosystem when the carrying capacity is going to exceed. So let us directly jump into the answer. So this will be the, so this will be the introduction. So as I already told you, the introduction will be the definition of carrying capacity. So you will define it in a two or three lines, jump to the second part of the answer, which will be the factors affecting the carrying capacity in the Himalayan region. So the first major factor will be the population. So when there's going to be an increasing population and inflow of tourism, so there's unregulated tourism, dense population is going to cause a strain in the local resources. So that is the major factor. And this is going to, of course, result in the over exploitation of water resources for the industry, agricultural purposes, increasing urbanization, all this is going to put a strain on the freshwater resources availability and unplanned urbanization, infrastructure development. Of course, urbanization is going to expand when there's going to be more inflow of people, right? So when there's going to be an unregulated tourism, that is when more amount of tourists are going to come into a particular region, there'll be increase in the number of hotels, resorts. So it is going to result in increasing concrete structures, which can be done only by clearing forests, right? So it is going to definitely disturb the delicate balance between the flora and fauna. As such, Himalayan region with its steep and varied top topography, it has a very minimal carrying capacity. That is, it has its own natural vulnerabilities, including landslides, earthquakes. So its carrying capacity as such is limited. So apart from that, when we're going to bring in a lot of factors from the anthropogenic side, so when there's going to be unregulated usage of water, clearing of forests, disturbance of this natural flora and fauna, it is going to create a very, very major, it's going to create huge consequences in that particular region. And apart from that, we also have this concept called climate change, right, which is threatening the entire globe. And when this carrying capacity of the Himalayan ecosystem is already disturbed, and when it is going to be accompanied by this climate change also, the consequences are going to be even more. So climate change is already accelerating increased amount of melting of glaciers, is 
flash floods like increased cloud burst occurrences are all happening in that particular region which is also posing a threat to the carrying capacity so this will be the factor which you can list in the second part of the answer and then we can move on to the consequences so how what are the consequences which is going to happen in that himalayan region so i think it is the consequences are going to be very huge since it is a very vulnerable region so we have the forest I mean, there is going to be increased occurrences of floods and landslides, which is going to result in relocation and rehabilitation of people. It's going to disrupt the social structures, traditional ways of life, and there is going to be habitat destruction. And Himalaya is known for its unique habitat, unique flora and fauna. It's rich in biodiversity that is going to be endangered now because of this. And over extraction and pollution of freshwater resources, it is going to threaten the irrigation, drinking water availability, aquatic ecosystems. and of course agricultural systems are also going to be impacted right so there is going to be water scarcity soil erosion there is going to be extreme weather events are going to impact and create a huge uh, issue with respect to food security and scarcity of resources like water fertile land can also cause social tensions leading to conflict so these are all the possible consequences when the carrying capacity of the himalayan region is going to be disturbed and now what can be done so what are the steps that we can take or in the conclusion we'll have to conclude by saying what can be the solution possible solution for avoiding these consequences so we'll have to bring in some strict regulations with respect to this urbanization so when we see that we're, when they are witnessing an increasing population in such fragile ecosystems unregulated tourism increasing population all these have to be somehow cut curtailed we'll have to bring in stricter regulations to protect these ecosystems we'll have to manage the resources sustainably we'll have to promote more amount of renewable energy usage right and for yes as i told you foster responsible tourism these are all few steps that we can take in order to prevent this fragile ecosystem of himalayas from facing unprecedented consequences so this is how you can conclude the answer okay now let us go about with uh, the papers right so many people have given me good answers so first let me take the paper of arya and so as i told you so you have to start the answer with the introduction that is the definition of carrying capacity so you have done that and uh, since it is given explain the concept of carrying capacity you can also add one or two lines to uh, to uh, so we can add one or two lines to highlight the importance of carrying capacity as well okay so that can be done and the graph is also good but don't draw it separately so when you're drawing the graph okay try to fill in this space also don't leave such spaces empty so never ever leave uh, so it is considered to be wastage of resources don't do that and then uh, this particular question has yes the structuring of answer was good so key factors which affect the carrying capacity of himalaya so topography altitude human activities cultural practices climate change natural disasters yes and then she is also i mean the person has also talked about the potential consequences of exceeding the limits yes the subheadings boxing of that it's all good resource depletion conflict loss of biodiversity soil erosion and soil degradation all that is fine yes and uh, yes to overcome the consequences sustainable practices of course conservation efforts and better resource management has to be taken into consideration so yes good way of concluding so always it is important to give a positive conclusion and then uh, the second paper is that of rajalakshmi yes she is also started with the introduction definition of carrying capacity yes and then so one point which i wanted to highlight in rajalakshmi's paper so factors affecting if you going to write such subheadings it seems to be incomplete so factors affecting the carrying capacity of the himalayan ecosystem complete that write that as a subheading so factors affecting it gives an incomplete meaning don't do this okay so whenever you write subheadings it has to carry some meaning so if i'm going to read this subheading factors affecting so the next question is what factors affecting what so try to complete this particular subheading okay and then the points were all fine so rising population climate change of pre altered precipitation so unchecked tourism urbanization so the points were all fine here again consequences so consequences of uh, disturbance in the carrying capacity so consequences in the himalayan ecosystem so that is again this subheading can also be little more elaborate so consequences was also fine and her conclusion yes uh, she is also quoted about the international mountain day and the theme restoring mountain ecosystem so which is a good way so you have brought in the Uh, current affairs part as well and the way of conclusion was good in this paper 
And then the next paper was that of Kritika. So Kritika, when you're starting the answer, it is not necessary for you to write this part. So it is not needed. You can very well directly go into the answer. You need not quote this as a subheading for the introduction. Introductions don't require an introduction. So you don't have to do that. And uh, so she's also started with defining the carrying capacity. So factors affecting, yes, all that is fine. And consequences was also, she's written almost all the points that we have discussed. Yes, and also she's added the initiatives which are taken by the Indian government recently with respect to the protection of Himalayan region. So that was also fine. And uh, in the conclusion, so the recommendations of few committees like Mishra committee, so quoting of such committees, quoting the current affairs, the recent steps taken will be an added advantage. So it's going to enhance your marks by 0.5 or 1. So that is a good way of uh, infusing the current affairs. So this is this was about the three paper. Okay, so now we'll discuss. Now let me give you the question for day 42. Okay, the question is explain the concept of Indian Ocean Dipole and analyze the relationship between Indian Ocean Dipole and the extreme weather events in India. So this is a 10 mark question. So I wish everyone to make use of this series to the ma maximum possible extent and keep writing. So wishing you all very best for your upcoming exams. Thank you so much.